For linear transformations from the plane to the plane, there's a really nice way to visualize them. I, I like visualizing them dynamically. So what I mean by this is, here's an example of the two-dimensional plane. I put the two unit vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1 on there. And then I'm going to imagine some linear transformation. Perhaps it is this one. And what I've done in this transformation is I've just stretched the vectors out so that the end of the animation is where the vectors end up and that the beginning of the animation is where they start. Now, if you're just stuck with a pen and paper, you have to sort of get a bit of a workaround for this. Maybe you put the original vectors and then for the transformed vectors, you just sort of write them on top on the same piece of paper and you figure out which were the transformed ones and which were the original ones. It's a little bit messy. But when you do it in this dynamic way, you just say, this is where it begins, and then it transforms and becomes these other vectors. All right, let's look at one more transformation. This transformation is gonna begin in just the same way. This is just the plane. But what it does is it leaves the x fixed and it takes y to the negative y. So it sort of comes along here and just squishes everything down and you get that the 0, 1 vector is going to become 0, minus 1. Now, there was one little feature about the unit vectors, the 1, 0 and the 0, 1 that I put up previously, that is very convenient. Because what it does is allow me to take any particular vector, like how about this one, this 1, minus 2, any particular vector, and I can immediately write this vector as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors. As in, an x1, x2 just separates as this x1 times the first basis vector, 1, 0, plus the x2 times the second basis vector, the 0, 1. Now we can visualize the representation of this decomposition into the standard basis vectors as follows. The, the green vector, the vector 1 to the right and 2 down, can be written as a linear combination where the x1 in effect is just 1. You take one of these copies of 1, 0, that's the red vector, and then the x2 is minus 2. And you take the standard basis vector that points straight up and you take two copies of it going down. So that's why we have a minus 2. Well, now that we have this little picture where we've written the arbitrary vector, the 1 minus 2, as its linear combination of standard basis vectors, let me apply a bunch of transformations to this and move them around. So how would I do that first, that sort of somewhat rotation stretching looking one? It's going to go off like that. And then I might want to do a different one. How about now that I've done this, I'm then going to apply the transformation that takes the y values and puts it to a negative. So I'll flip it around in the y axis, keeping all the x's fixed. But let me visualize that one more time. So I began here, and, and you notice the green was this linear combination where you went once along the red and then negative twice along the yellow. But if I then apply a linear transformation, okay, the red changes and the yellow changes, but it's still one along the red and minus two along the yellow. If I apply the inverted the y-axis transformation, well, again, the vectors are all changing, but the green vector is still one along the red and minus two along the yellow. This idea of doing one transformation and then another transformation is composition of transformations. And what it means is if you have a whole bunch of different transformations floating around, that you can do all of them in succession. So the takeaway here is that even as I do one transformation, then another, and perhaps another after that, is that when you have one vector written as a linear combination of the other vectors, that while all of the vectors individually change, the instruction to go one along the one vector or minus two along the other vector, that remains fixed. Indeed, when I write a generic vector in this way, and x1, x2 is written as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors, you can think of this philosophically as an instruction. What is a vector like 1 minus 2? Well, it is an instruction. It tells you to go 1 along the standard basis vector 1, 0, and to go minus 2 along the standard basis vector 0, 1. This is an instruction. And then as you apply different linear transformations, the instruction remains the same, but it's an instruction on different vectors. It still go 1 along the red and minus 2 along the yellow, but the red and yellow change according to the transformation. Okay, so that's the big picture, but let's now track what's going on algebraically as we tell this geometric story. Having begun with the vectors written as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors, when I go and apply the first transformation to it, what effectively is happening is that this linear combination has some transformation. So I'm going to go and replace it. I'm going to put a t everywhere. And then I know what the t does. It's going to take the first standard basis vector to 2, 1, and the second standard basis vector to minus 1, 1. So I can represent it in this way. That's what doing the first transformation did. 
Okay, now let me apply the second transformation. So visually, it looks a little bit like this because it's flipping along the Y. But algebraically, what's happening? Well, I have all of this algebra I've already done, but now I'm applying a new transformation. The first transformation was called T. It's called the second one, S. So I've got to put an S all the way through. Because of the linearity, it's a linear transformation I'm applying, it, it does respect these linear combinations. Okay, well, now what happens? I know that S is the transformation that takes a Y value to its negative. So if I look what the transformation does on, say, 2, 1 here, well, it takes the Y part, that's the 1 that makes it negative. So it's going to go to 2, minus 1. And likewise, the minus 1, 1 is going to go to minus 1, minus 1. So this linear combination is the linear combination I get after first applying T and then applying S. Now, this was great. This was a really nice story. We saw how a vector was written in terms of a linear combination of the standard basis vectors. We applied a first transformation. It became the same linear combination, but the vectors changed. The vectors changed to this 2, 1 and this minus 1, 1. Then we applied a second transformation, the S transformation. And again, it was the same linear combination. The X1 and the X2 didn't change, but what changed was the linear combination of what vectors. Those changed again, now to the 2, minus 1 and the minus 1, minus 1. Now, what I've just done, this is the way of thinking about this geometrically in terms of linear combinations. But I want to repeat this process because I want to use the language of matrices, not the language of linear combinations. And I really like linear combinations the way I like thinking about things. It feels very natural to me, and I hope that it's going to feel natural to you. But I want to do the translation so that we can tell this exact story, but now with matrices everywhere opposed to linear combinations. Now, the reason matrices get snuck in here is if I look at this transformation, that was the first one we saw, and it has that particular linear combination of x1, x2. Well, a linear combination was, by definition, matrix multiplication. That this linear combination of 2, 1 and minus 1, 1, this simply was the same thing as this particular matrix, this 2, 1, minus 1, 1. Indeed, there's no proof of this claim. This is, by definition, it's just different notation to express the same idea. And if I want to give a name to it, I could call this particular matrix the B matrix. So according to the transformation T, which is a general geometric transformation, it has the matrix representation, this particular matrix. Okay, let's do the same thing for the S transformation. This is the one that did this squishing and inverting in the Y values. Well, here it's a given linear combination. Again, linear combinations are just going to be the definition of matrix multiplication. So this is this particular matrix, and this time I'm going to call it the A matrix. So the T transformation was associated with a specific matrix, the B matrix. The S transformation was associated with a specific matrix, the A matrix. All right, right back to the beginning, and let's translate in our matrix terminology. I've got my first vector here written as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors. Now I'm going to do my first transformation, and what doing my first transformation now means is multiplying this whole thing by that particular B matrix. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to insert my B matrix. Now, these matrix vector products are actually really easy to compute in this particular case because the multiplying by the first basis vector just gives me the first column of the matrix. Multiplying by the second basis vector just gives me the second column of the matrix. So I can do these computations really quickly and I get exactly the result that I had before. And then if I just sort of clean it up here, I now am going to go and apply the other transformation. So let's go and apply this other transformation. Here we go. And what that was doing was the same as taking this expression here and multiplying it by the A matrix, or in other words, doing the S transformation to it. So what do I have? The same thing here, but now I've got that the A matrix is multiplied everywhere. Fortunately, these matrix vector products are a little bit more challenging in this particular scenario. It's not just the standard basis vectors. You can't just cherry pick the first and second column, but you can multiply them out easily enough and that you're going to get this particular linear combination. Now, remember, linear combinations are just the definition of matrix multiplication. This linear combination, I can just rewrite it as a matrix times a vector. It's just doing the same thing, just different notation. If I want to give an actual variable name for it, well, remember how we did the T transformation that associated with the B matrix? And then second, we applied the S transformation that associated the A matrix. Why don't I just call this, this is my choice, why don't I call it the matrix that is named A times B? So, what have we seen? We can take a vector. We can write it as a linear combination of the standard basis vectors. 
And then we can apply a bunch of different transformations that keep it the same linear combination, but the linear combination with the same coefficients, but just different vectors. And the vectors first become the t applied to the standard basis vectors, and then the s applies to whatever the t did to the standard basis vectors. So that's geometrically what matrix multiplication represents. It represents the matrix that comes from the transformation that is a composition of different transformations. And then if it turns to the question of how to compute the AB matrix, well, we have a whole separate video on that that you can go watch because it's just an algebraic computation. You just go ahead and do it. But we can see from the computation what we've done, how to come up with the AB matrix. Indeed, this 2 minus 1 that we have here, well, that's just the A matrix multiplied by 2, 1, multiplied by the first column of the B matrix. And likewise, the minus 1, minus 1 is the same A matrix, but multiplied against the second column of the B matrix, multiplied against this minus 1, 1. So algebraically, here is what it is. If you've got your m by n matrix A, and I go and write my A as a bunch of column vectors, A1 down to An, and I've got an n by P matrix B, and I can write that as this column vectors, B1 down to BP now, then what I'm going to get out of this when I multiply them is going to be an m by p matrix. And it's the matrix whose columns, you compute each column by just doing a times b1, all the way down to a times bp. And since you already know how to do matrix vector multiplication, doing matrix, matrix multiplication is just the same thing but a bunch of times in a row. Just do the a times the b1, a times the b2, all the way down to the a times the bp. Put those in the columns of your matrix and you're done. Of course, it is important to check that the numbers match. It has to be an m by n times n by p. The two n's have to match. Well, it doesn't make sense. The output of the one transformation isn't in the same space as the needed input for the next one. Final thing I want to look at is, we did one particular order. We did one transformation first, and then we did the second one. What if I did the other way around? What if I applied first the s transformation, the one that flipped the negative on the y. And then second, I did that one that did the sort of slightly stretching rotation looking thing. So it's the same two transformations, but done in a different order. Well, I'm gonna do them for you at the same time here. So the top one, I'm gonna do the same order we saw before, the sort of stretching rotation thing first, and then the flip along the y-axis. On the bottom one, I'm gonna flip along the y-axis first. So here's the first half of it. Come along, and what happens? Now, Part way through, they turn out to be very different vectors. So this one, it flipped it in the y value. That was the second transformation. And this is the first part, as we saw before. Now I'm going to reverse it. So I'm going to flip the y's on the top, and I'm going to do this sort of stretchy rotation thing down on the bottom. Okay, so what happens there? Off they go. And look at this. They end up at the exact same spot. The two green arrows are precisely the same. The reds and the yellows are precisely the same. So in this case, Doing the one transformation first and then the other was exactly the same output as doing the other transformation first and then the one. It didn't matter which order we put it in. Now, is this always true or is it not always true? Now, it actually turns out that this is not always true. Sometimes when you compose a transformation and then alternate the order in which you compose it, you get the same result. And sometimes when you multiply out an AB, it is the same matrix as when you multiply out BA. But it is not always the case. So I want to leave this as a challenge to you. I want you to geometrically think about transformations from R2 to R2, to keep it simple, and try to think about two different transformations where when you compose them one way, you get a different result from when you compose them a different way. That is my challenge for you.